Good morning, good evening, and welcome to this week's Fiberific Live Craft and Chat, where we craft and chat live. We jump in, we work on our projects, we natter about all the things, we solve the problems of the world, just like a normal craft group. Um, we've got a bit of housekeeping to get started with, so um, I'll get that done. Um, it is the I want to say third Thursday of the month, which is really hard to believe, but it, but it is, is it, is it? Hang on a second. Let me just double check. I'm very confused by something now and I just want to double, it is, it is a th I'm like, wait, I wrote a list. I'm like, I'm on top of this. I'm on top of this. I can legit do it. Let me see on Thursday, one, two, yeah. It is the third Thursday of the month. And in a second, I'll tell you why I got confused. It is the third Thursday of the month. We have caffeinated crafters happening. Um, and why I was confused is because wasn't last Saturday the third Saturday of the month and we had a productivity stream? Yes is the answer. The answer is yes. The Saturday just gone was the productivity stream. So I was confused. So third Thursday of the month means it's an IKEA meetup. I am feeling a lot better. I do have some appointments this afternoon and I'm going to wait and see how I feel after those. And if I'm hoping, I should feel pretty good. So I'm planning on going for the first time in easily a month. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. I'm really, really looking forward to it. So um, Kelly is in the chat. Hello, Kelly. It's so good to see you made myself a tea this morning. That is so awesome. Um, and this is also, hello, peeps. Hello, everybody. If you are here, if you are watching the live stream, um, let me know and uh, by popping in and saying hello, letting me know what is in your cup. So in my cups today, I am the beverage goblin, but my beverage goblinism is different this week than usual. So I have a glass of bubbly water, as in like, you know, I hit the soda stream up and just carbonated some water. I have stock standard flat water in my Star Wars thing. But in my Yeti today, I do not have coffee. I have my um, T2 licorice legs tea uh, because, and, and um, Kelly's saying I don't sound husky at all. I feel a little raspy, uh, but I've been drinking some tea this morning already and that definitely helped and I had some other stuff earlier. So that's definitely helped. I did a lot of talking the other day. Like, you know, when you, oh, you, you may not know this, but I, I work in this office all the time and I will normally talk for maybe an hour or two in a live stream, but outside of the live streams through the day, I may talk in like these little five minute bursts or half an hour bursts or one hour call bursts. That's it. Usually half an hour. I went out and about and was with humans and chatted off and on all day. And I came home with like a dry sore throat. My voice is not used to me talking with people all day. So a um, little bit of a sore throat, hoping that that's all it is. So um, it's, it's the licorice root tea, which doesn't taste anything like licorice, I'll say, because I love licorice, don't get me wrong. Tastes nothing like licorice. So it's a dash on the warm side. Like I could, it could, I could take the lid off it and let it cool down a little. But I also have my, my water. So my projects today um, that I'll be working on is Abby's Waffle Blanket because her birthday is in two weeks and I really want to get it done in time for her birthday. Oh, my gosh. Um, so that... But also, when I need a little break, like my eyes are still not 100% yet. So when I need a break and change it up, I've got my Rocket Tea, which I have started the eye cord bind off. So we'll continue with the eye cord bind off of the body. It still needs sleeves and a neckband, but, you know, they're only going to be short sleeves. <laughs> and I'm a bit nervous about the neckband. I'm not the best at picking up the v-neck neck bands but I saw like a, a bit of a cheat a bit of what's well, not a cheat just a variation on how to do it so I, I saw that and I want to get in and, and try that so now um, for those of you that are wondering where our US friends are we do have time zone shifts so it's an hour uh, this stream is an hour earlier for them 
Um, and so it may or may not suit them. So we'll just have to wait and see. So let's, let's jump down here and just get started on the blanket. Oh, goodness me. So um, Siobhan is here as well. Good morning, Siobhan. It's great to see you. And Leanne, so good to see you. Sally's here as well. Awesome. You guys are amazing for keeping me company during my craft chats. It's so wonderful. It's so wonderful. Um, let me adjust. Or, um, can I, which one is that? There we go. All right. Um, what am I doing? Let me just see here. I think winter is definitely coming. It's so cold. I am so, I realized, was it yesterday or the day before was the equinox? And I'm just like, oh yeah, bring it. Bring those shorter days. I want those shorter days. Get rid of that sunshine. Give me less heat. I'd prefer to be less melty. Thanks very much. Like so many people are like, oh my God, I love the sun. It must be amazing living in Australia and it's sunny all the time. And I'm just like looking at my pale skin that goes crispy if I'm outside for 10 minutes. And, and I'm just like, yeah, it's so good. Oh, why are you doing that? Come on, camera. What's, let me just like, I didn't realize I had autofocus on, but let me just check that. I do have autofocus on. That's so annoying. Let's turn that off and just just put the focus where we want it. There we go. Thanks very much. Scaring me. Um, good morning, Game Widows. Great to see you. Um, it's 18. It's not that cold, but compared to the weather we've been having, it's cold. Oh, in the ACT, it's under five with a cold breeze. Oh, my gosh. That sounds amazing. Like, I'm like, oh, my gosh, it's so much cooler. And I think we're still at, like, 25. Let me just let me just have a look here. Yeah, it's still 25 degrees here. And we're just like, oh, yeah, that's so much cooler. Uh, I can't wait. I, I can't wait till I can start complaining about how cold this room gets because that's the next thing. This room it just it basically it, – I may as well be outside, honestly. Um, it, it's hot when it's hot and it's cold when it's cold. Um, I, there's no, I don't know what the deal is with it. It's, there's, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's insulated apparently, like it doesn't feel insulated, but it is. Um, oh yeah, I need the night temps to drop a bit more. I went to bed last night at around, I want to say 10.30 ish and it was still 24 degrees. So I'm just like, oh, come on, just like get under 20. Like for the overnight temps, I need them to be under 20 and then I'll be a happy camper. Um, like seriously, get down to double, get down to single digits and I will cheer for overnights. Um, but you know, I'll, I'll take 20. I'll take, I'll take 19, 20 for an overnight temperature, please give it to me. Um, let me have a, a look. It's fresher in the gully. I think I heard possible rain. Yeah, it's definitely overcast here. Um, I've, we had some spitting. I was sitting in the lounge room and I, I got a bit overexcited um, because I noticed all the grey clouds and that it was a little bit spitty and we had a breeze. I'm like, oh, my God, it's all the things I like. Um, now, you know, I'm not a doom and gloomer, right? I like sunshine. I do. I like sunshine. I just don't like, like, beating sun that when you step out into it, your skin shrivels, you know. I like, I like to be able to sit out in the sun and just be warm and not, like, crisp. Am I asking too much? I could be asking too much. I could be unrealistic in my expectations. I certainly feel like I'm unrealistic in my expectations in um, for Queensland. So it is subtropical here, baby. I also like winter for the less humidity. Less humidity, please. That would be awesome. Thanks very much. I will take less humidity. Um... But yeah, it is, it's one of those things. It's very funny. It's very funny. And um, I, I do get the conversation of, oh my gosh, it must be so nice to live in Australia where it's sunny all the time. And you're just like, mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's so good. It's so good. No, <laughs> it's like I sent, there was a, there was a tweet um, uh, from one of the, uh, I think it was Adobe. No, was it? No, no, no. It was buy me a coffee. Buy me, buy me a coffee. I don't know. Anyway, some brand that I follow, <laughs> sorry, brand, some brand that I follow that I like, they, they put out really engaging content, which I love, which I also follow them to look at their engaging content. 
um, and go, hmm, that, that worked for them. I wonder if it could work for myself or any of my clients. But um, – or something similar. Uh, but um, anyway, they wanted to see a photo of our workstations. <laughs> um, it was ConvertKit. Now, I know it was ConvertKit because they wanted to see what your, where your workstation was um, and how, you know, for, for writing all your inspiring emails. <laughs> Those of you that are on my email lists are laughing right now. Like, what emails? She doesn't write emails. She just collects the email addresses like a dragon, like, I am mine now. <laughs> but... Um, but anyway, so I posted a photo of my studio of like, you know, from this sort of view. And I'm like, this is my bat cave and this is where I make all the things and I do all of the things. And they're like, oh, my God, it is a space station. Like, it is. Absolutely. So I was like, I, sh I have the con. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll run with the space theme for sure. Because it's... Like, unless I've got lighting on, this room is blacked out. I've, I've covered all the windows. It is a, it, this room is black. Um, I like to control everything. Um, so I control my lighting. Um, it, it also means that if there's a really nice breeze, I don't get it. So after the streams, I'll, I'll open up one of the windows and, and let the breeze in and air out the room and, and enjoy the, the cool while I'm responding to emails and... and doing other things, but when I'm live streaming, I like to control the light. I will quite often leave it open if I'm on a call and there's no noise outside. So if I'm doing a video call with somebody, I will, um, I'll open it up and just have a bit more natural light, but I still have other lights on because this room is quite dark. Uh, good morning, Christina Trotter. It is great to say, see you having a day off. I hope for a good reason. Um, and, and yeah, so good that you could jump in and that you're using part of your day off to hang out with us. So thanks for, for joining us. And Russell's in another meeting. It's just snuck in like, whoosh. um, but I'll see you when you get back. Enjoy your meeting. So yeah. Um, let me just keep going here. Now Abby's gone out, right? So I don't think she realizes how close to finishing this blanket I am. It is so good. It is so good. Um, definitely, I've got like this ball and maybe one other that I want to put in. So I'll, I'll wait until I've done this ball and work it out. So as those of you that come regularly know, um, when I got COVID, it really, it messed me up a lot. Like I'd never had it before. It was my first time and it messed me up big time. And um, it messed up my brain for a long time as well. Now I am starting to feel like my normal self. I'm beginning to feel human again. I'm beginning to be able to focus on things again, which, you know, that I always considered my focus was my superpower and then I lost my superpower. So, you know, when you watch all those trope shows where there's like the super person or the person with the ability loses their ability and they don't know how to cope, that was me. I didn't know how to cope with not being able to focus on things. I couldn't craft. I couldn't watch a new show. I, could, I, I couldn't even enjoy the time not being able to work. I was just sort of sitting like a lump, just like taking naps all the time is what it was. I was having to take a lot of naps is the other problem. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, naps are great. But when you have to take a nap all of the time, it's, is, it, is it still a nap? <laughs> Or is it just day sleeping? I don't know. Anyway, so the whole thing was really messing with me. It was really doing my head in. And I just, I needed to have a reset. And um, I just really needed to find something to, to kick it over and get back on board. And I was slowly, slowly getting back on board. And then the other day, I just got this idea into my head that I should go and work out of a different building I not sit at this desk just get out and go and do something because I work here by myself um a lot all the time as a matter of fact so unless my husband's working from home which is very rare um or my daughter is on a, a day off from from uni and from her job which is also rare I am here by myself working all the time and I decided to contact a friend of mine who's 
I mean, I say local. <laughs> it was a two-hour drive. Um, and asked if I could work out of their offices for the day and just come up and, and just, I need a change of scenery. Is there any chance I can hop one of your desks there if you've got a spare? And, and they were like, yeah. I, yeah, see, when we, like, you know, what time will you be here? And, and I was just like, oh, I can be there at this kind of time. And then the traffic was a nightmare. There was, like, accidents and just, like, it was just, it was really messy. And I'm like, is this the universe telling me I should just go back home? And just not do this today. But I persevered and I drove up. And I had the absolute best day. I got work done. I feel like I was a bit more productive. Even though I probably disrupted them. But even though I still got to chat with people who are interested in what I'm interested in. And we t got to talk. Like I got to geek out on some tech I haven't played with. And just like I had a really good time. And then drove home. I was wiped, right? The four hours of concentrated driving, that was my limit, right? I got home that night and I'm just like, <laughs> I was getting the whole what's for dinner thing and everyone else had been home all day and I'm just like, okay, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and we just made it like a fend for yourself night. Like there's lots of leftovers in the fridge. There's all sorts of things. Um, oh, hello, Macy. You're very talkative. What's wrong? Macy's come in and is yelling at me. I don't know if you could hear her. She was very loud. Um, uh, that's that's not right. Let's fix that. Um, but, yeah, so and then the next day I was shattered. I was so shattered. And then I started, like, coming down with this, like, throat thing, which was the start of what Tim had. But... He started, like, he started getting sick, like, two weeks ago. I'm like, if I was going to catch this, I would have gotten it already. And I, I worked out that I think it was just from talking. Because, like, he started with, like, headaches and temperatures and stuff. I don't have any of that. I just got a sore spot in my throat. And this is one spot. I don't have, like, you know, nothing else. It's just a, a sore, dry spot in my throat. And, um, and I'm like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. Uh, and I still feel like my voice is different and a bit raspy, but you guys like are telling me it sounds fine, so that's cool. Um, I, I am going to keep keep it, you know, keep hydrating and and keep on top of the the licorice root tea, so that I can try and protect it as much as I can because I really do want to, um, I really do want to keep talking. <laughs> So, but if, if it starts getting too painful, I will have to stop the stream. So we'll go there. Um, let me have a look. Um, that was so awesome that they let you come to, into their office and do your thing. Yeah, it was so amazing. They're like, you can, they've, they had a couple of spare desks and like, you can choose whichever you want. But that one's got an air conditioner above it and it's got a monitor and you can just plug it into your laptop so you can use the monitor. And, and, and I'm just like... I just felt at home. I really did. They made me feel so welcome. It was wonderful. And and then we all sort of ducked out and had lunch together. And, and it was – we got rained on on the way home, which was kind of funny, on the right, way back to the office, which was kind of funny. None of us had an umbrella. Um, but it was just – it was a really amazing day. And I just felt so rejuvenated from it. And it's made me realise one thing, one really important thing – after working from home for 15 years, I need to take some time and go and work somewhere else. Like, like not like a full-time, like t Tim's like, yes, get a full-time job. But no, like I just mean like go and work somewhere else um, and go and get, you know, um, a co a go and sit in a coffee shop and work or go and sit somewhere else and, and work that's not here. And luckily I do have a laptop. I mean, it's, it's not an awesome laptop and it does limit the kind of work I can do. But there's still plenty I could get done, I, even for half a day. It doesn't have to be a whole day. Like I could go out at like, you know, leave here at like nine, come back in time, you know, have lunch out maybe or come back in time for lunch and just have a different scenery. And I, I think I need that. And after having my day up in my friend's office, I'm just like, yeah, I need to do this more often. Um, maybe not somewhere that takes me two hours away um <laughs> but um somewhere a bit closer so if you guys are local to me like some of you know you're local-ish to me so I'm in the south side Brisbane area um like halfway between Brisbane and the Gold Coast 
if you know of a great location that will let you sit and order coffee and and just work, um, I'd love that. I'd love that. Um, it might be just you uh, with the wheel of death. I'm still seeing I've got good connection here. So um, I think it might just be you. I'm sorry, Kelly, maybe a refresh. If anybody else could let her know if it's, if it's just her, that'd be great. Um, yeah, it is nice for me. It is nice for me. <laughs> um, catching up on chipmunk mode. I love that. I love it so much. Um, I'm hanging out to be caught in the rain. I have Mary Poppins umbrella. Come on, rain. Yeah, look, you know, my umbrella was in my car. <laughs> so it did me a lot of good in the car. It's kind of funny. There was this, it was just a really nice day of just like silly conversations as well as serious conversations. As, you know, it was, a, it was a really nice mix. It really was. I just had such the best day. So I very much appreciate them just going, sure. I mean, they could have said no, but they didn't. So I really appreciate it. Um, let me just, where are we at? I need to have a drink. I love Mary Poppins umbrellas. I think they're cool. I do think they're cool. I've just got just a stock standard little pop-up umbrella that I can throw in my handbag. Um, but when it's like, it's just currently in the boot because, you know, I don't put wet umbrellas back in my bag. So it was in the boot while I was having a little bit of a time out while it dried and thought about its choices. So, yeah. So let me know in the chat, what are you working on? I mean, I'm working on this blanket. It's the waffle blanket. I do, I have, believe it or not, put the links in the description. Um, hard to believe. Oh, wait a second. Yeah, it should be there, right? It should be there. I set the stream up with different software and decided to run with this one. So there should be a description. I'm just like, what? The dog's going off. Hopefully it's just, that's just Tim home. Um... Let me just, I'm just like, wait, what? Hang on a second. It should be, it should be the right one, right? I'm just like, I need to mute my phone. Just, you know, I'm just like, oh my gosh, what am I even doing? What is my name? What do I do for a living again? That's right. I help people with YouTube. Um, <laughs> and I can't even work out if my stream is the right stream. That's so funny. I'm, I'm made of clever. I am legit made of clever. Um, not now. I don't want that. Let's have a look here. Um, close the chat in the description. It's there. I just checked it. It's there. I mean, I may not have spelled all the words right, but it's there. Okay. So definitely in the description, because <laughs> I've just checked, um, is the my Ravelry links to the projects I'm working on. This one is in Karen, Yanspirations Karen Cakes in the colorway beach glass, which I just love this colorway. Um, I may have to fight Abby for using this blanket every now and again. It does feel amazing. Um, now I do have, and I saw Sally pop the link in before. I now have an affiliate with Yanspirations, but before we get too excited about that, because I was very excited, they only ship to Canada and the USA at this stage. Now, on their website, if you click shipping um, or um, frequently asked questions, one of those, you can actually ask them, like they, they, oh, no, it is. It's in the shipping section. And they actually say, you know, currently we're shipping to these two locations, but if you would like us to ship to your location, fill out this form, uh, you know, contact us. So I clicked the contact us and I, I, I filled it all out. I'm like, please ship to Australia. We love your yarns here. And it's hard to get all of them. Sometimes you'll get like one, but not all of them. And then you'll get like limited colours and it'd be just really great to be able to order directly. Um, so feel free to send them that message if you're in Australia and you want to use Yarnspiration. But if you are in the US or Canada, please consider clicking on my affiliate link. It costs you no extra to use that. So that would be amazing. Um, let's have a look here in the chat. 
I am repairing a handspun jumper that got caught on something. Oh my gosh, that's stressful. Um, still working on the lace weight top. <gasps> Can't wait to see how that looks. Um, sea glass tea, and I'm loving the color changing. There's just something about the sea glass colors, isn't there? Um, Christina is organizing her son's 18th. Uh, this is my break before I run around and get things sorted. Yeah, 18ths are a big one. They're a big one. Um, the band of a beanie. Crochet bands just don't cut it compared to knit. We need a designer to come up with something more awesome. Could it be done? There is. I have seen... Um, uh, who is it? Uh I think it. I, I think it's Adaday Designs. She's got a band on some of hers where she actually does the the short row slip stitching into the back loop um, and creates a band and then stitches it on, um, or like or you start with that and then crochet, then you flip it and crochet along the edge. Um, that's a little stretchy, but there's nothing really crochet that stretches like a rib. Do you know what I mean? Like a knit rib. Um, but I really love the band on the Thatcher hat. And it's not at all stretchy. It just sits nicely. So, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Um, Sue Singleton is here. Sneaking in. Sneaking in. Hey, Sue, how you going? Um, so, yeah, good to see you. Glad that you could make it. I know what it's like. Sometimes just things just get on top of us and we can't always do the stuff we want to do. Like you've got other priorities and things have to happen. It is just the way of the world. Dolores says, technically I'm working on the mystery blanket, but snuggling with a pup instead. You know what? That sounds like a legitimate task. There are days when Louis comes and does this cute, adorable thing, climbs up the... Because I normally sit on a couch with my feet on a footstool. <coughs> he climbs up the footstool and uses my legs like a little little bridge and then comes and snuggles. And you're just like, oh, I just have to stay here now. I can't get up and move. I have to stay here and get snuggled. That's my job now. I am the puppy snuggler. You know, and Louis coming up to three. He's not exactly a baby anymore, but he's still cute and adorable. So tiny. Tim's out there making coffee. I heard the coffee machine go, and my brain's like, mmm, coffee. But I'm like, no, have the tea. Protect the throat. Protect, protect. So Ellen is procrastinating. Uh oh, let me bring this up. Over starting a crochet jumper for my daughter after a pattern change as I couldn't get the crochet cable to work. Oh, that's frustrating. So was, was it you that, like, it sounds harsh. Was it you or was it the pattern? Because some, some of the patterns I just, I really struggle with. And I'm not a beginner crocheter. I would consider myself an advanced crocheter. Um, and every now and again, a pattern will skunk me. And I'm just like, man, but then, you know, you go through and you read it and you find out it skunked everybody and you're like, okay, all right, this is not a me problem. <laughs> this is a, the pattern wasn't described well enough problem. Um, I'm really hoping that you are able, what kind of sweater or jumper are you looking at? I am a massive fan. Adiday Designs has this jumper that is just so nice. Cannot think of the name, but I totally made one. It's in my Ravelry queue. Oh, not Rivalry Q, my Rivalry Projects. Um, and it is just so nice and squishy and warm and just, it's amazing. It's a little too warm for Queensland. I'm not going to lie. But, and, and every now and again, I'm tempted to just unravel it because like I, I made it a little oversized. So it's quite heavy for me. Um and so I'm like, I mean, I could I could reclaim half a kilo of yarn if I just unravel it. It's just taken up half a drawer. It's so big and delicious, but I just love it. Um, it's the added day. Can't think of the name. Anyway, I loved it. It was amazing. Oh, it could be you because you've never done crochet cables. Okay. So crochet cables, when I very first started doing them, 
I thought I was doing them wrong. Because the thing I noticed about crochet cables is they leave little gills, like I called them gills, on the back. It was an Adelong sweater. That's the one, Sally. Thank you. It was an Adelong. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. Yes, the Adelong sweater by Addy Day Designs, who is also Deanne Ramsey. Um, that's the one. Absolutely love that sweater. Absolutely love it. It is like I dream for days that are cool enough that I can wear it. Honestly, so I do. I dream for days that are cool enough. They're coming. I might get a day where I can sit in the lounge and be all warmed up. Um, I'm onto the Mermaid Cat Design Jumper Cozy Design. Oh, sounds lovely. It sounds lovely. All right, it's time to flip. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, it's flipped. And let's just cover some of the desk with the blanket. There we go. It's got to make it look pretty, right? You guys got to sit here with it on your screen for hours and hours. The least I can do is make it look pretty. Um, let's have a look here. Um, I've had one successful crochet cable project, also a beanie. I'll probably never try it again. I ended up getting confident enough in crochet cables to teach a crochet cable workshop. Um, oh, wait a second. What am I, I'm, I did that wrong. You remember how I screw up this thing all the time on that second last stitch? Like every time. I can't help it. I have to mess it up and make the first stitch into the next side orcs. Like it's just the rules, right? Um, let me just, there we go, in we go, all right, let's try again, let's try again into the stitches that have been done properly, um, anyway, so what I was saying was I've, I actually ended up being confident enough that, um, a workshop that I teach, um, it's a long workshop, it, it's like a, it's a, it's a full day job, um, it, it actually should be really run over a few weeks, but, it can be condensed down to a full day, like an eight hour. Um, but it's a crochet blanket um, using like, I think it's four or six, might be six. No, it's six colors, four squares um, of different crochet cables. So um, yeah, it does sound like another tutorial. It could be another tutorial. I've got I've got a list, you know, for someone who doesn't design, I have quite a list of tutorials I need to make. Um, so, yeah, I always feel weird about running tutorials because I'm not a designer. But in this particular instance, I'm teaching a technique and I am confident in teaching techniques. So, yeah. Uh, crocheting cables hurts my head sometimes being a lefty. I have to sometimes... Um, flip the instructions around in my head. Oh, yes. I would have to specify that while there's a lot of things I can teach left-handed, I don't think I can teach crochet cables left-handed. I'll have to very much um, just run the workshop in the right-handed way. And, and unfortunately, for those of you that are left-handed, you'll need to make your own adjustments. Um, I'm very sorry about that. I'm very sorry about that. So... And I'm hoping that in the next couple of weeks we can start the um, the witchcraft game back up again. I just need to give my brain a bit more time. Um, I was I nearly decided to run it today, and then I was just like, no, you know what? I can. I've only just been able to start craft again without getting dizzy. So um, I don't want to, you know, straight away. You know, straight away. I'll get back into it. We'll get back into it. It was fun. I really enjoyed it. It was stressful for me. Like, oh, my God, which project are they going to choose? I don't feel like working on that one. And that's invariably the one that gets chosen. And you're just like, ah, oh, geez. Because, like, 
There's one. There's my mink cow, my bunny mink cow, that I'm just like, man, I do not want to work on that if I'm wearing a black shirt because that, that, that means that after the stream I have to get changed. That shirt can't, can't stay. It gets covered in the fluffs. I'm really hoping that when I give it a wash, it's less sheddy because it's quite sheddy right now. Um, I'm hoping that a wash will help it be less sheddy. Otherwise, I'm going to really struggle with wearing it because I don't want the clothes that I wear it with to be just covered in, in like bunny and mink. I like it to be in the cowl, not on my shirt. How do you guys feel about yarns that shed? Let me know in the chat. Oh, actually, so we we had a little run through the. Um, I'll, I'll I'll quickly do it again, um, because it was it was quite early in the stream, but um, we had a little run through of some housekeeping, and then I realised I got sidetracked and didn't finish. I didn't finish the housekeeping. So housekeeping is today is the third Thursday of the month. Caffeinated Crafters is happening at IKEA Logan starting from six pm. So if you want to g come along to that, if you are local, feel free. We just uh, hog some space in the food court and all of us order our own stuff. You don't have to order dinner if you don't want. You can just do whatever you want. And then we tend to stay there until they, they kick us out and or they're like wiping tables around us and then we just cut through the shortcuts to get back out again. Um, and so that is on tonight. This Saturday, channel members, this is for you. So if you're a channel member, be listening. This Saturday is our very first Discord channel member call. Um, so over in Discord, there is, a, there is an area where, you can, where I can run. It's very similar to a Zoom. You join in. You can use your microphone and your camera if you want. And we can sit and we can chat for an hour or so and have a really fun time just having a conversation where it's, we, uh, you guys are talking to me as well. So it's like a Zoom. So, it, you know, you can have your camera off if you don't want to, uh, if you don't want your face on. But but I'd love to see some faces. So feel free to go in and test it out. But this is for current paid channel members only. Discord will not let you into the area if you are not a channel member. So this is for those of you that have um, channel memberships. So please um, just keep that in mind if you can't, if, and if you're struggling, if you are a channel member and you can't work it out, send a message, put a message into the Discord or into the Facebook group someone will come in and help you and make it so that it's easier for you and help you to get in. But that is happening. I think it's 10 my time. I think I made it 10. Let me just check my calendar. Um, but, 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 yes, it is. I made it 10 o'clock my time so that it was easy for me to remember. <laughs> so, so the same time that this stream starts um, and go from there. So, um, we can go in and just have some fun with that. So I really, I really wanted to like, I haven't made this a perk for the channel members yet. I want to test this out before I decide if it's a permanent thing. Um, I am looking at rejigging the channel memberships a little bit. There'll be plenty of notice. Um, there will just be things added. There won't be anything taken away. Um, and so, but there, there may be things added to different levels. So that it, at, currently right now, it doesn't matter which level channel member you're on, you get all the benefits, right? Which are none. Um, whereas, um, look at this. Oh my goodness. You guys are amazing. Both Kelly and Leanne have gifted channel memberships. Um, let me look here. <laughs> Um, I think it's hilarious at home. Rapid Repair was gifted. <laughs> anyway, sorry. I'm going in. I'm going in. It's moving too fast. It's moving too fast. So Leanne had put in a, um, a message, welcome newbies. And I was trying to work out what was going on. But I'd say that you were sort, sorting out a gifted membership. So let me have a look here. So then Kelly gifted five memberships. Leanne has gifted one membership. So Bianca scored a membership from Kelly. Knit Spin Girls scored a membership from Kelly. Talia has scored a membership from Kelly. Home Rapid Repair, which I'm going to I'm going to go and message Larry. He'll think this is funny. Um, he scored a membership. Sylvia Bryant has scored a membership from Kelly, 
And then Yarning for a Smiles Yarntopia scored a membership from Leanne's Craft Room. So, wow, that is massive. And that's awesome. So those of you that are newly minted channel members, make sure you're over on the Discord. You'll be able to join into this call even with a gifted membership. Gifted memberships give you the full perks as well. Um, so, you know, you, you need go and go and check that out. Go and check it out. That was just amazingly generous, you guys. Thank you so much. Um, so, yeah, so our first channel member um, group call will be on this Saturday, 10 a.m. Brisbane time. So if you're southern states, it'll be 9 a.m. And if you're in another country, you'll need to do some math. Um, what I'm going to be doing after the live stream today is I'll actually be setting up the call in Discord and it will show you the time in your local time. Um, so that will be awesome. Um, and I and I tell you this because um, I didn't realise it was showing me my local time and I went to join a call that I thought was at like that time but their time and I was, you know, 11 hours early. So you guys, both Leanne and Kelly, thank you so much for doing that. That was awesome. But, yes, we'll be having our very first members call over on the Discord server. It will not be on Facebook. It will not be recorded for a replay. It is a live only event. If you cannot make it, you miss out. Um, unfortunately, at this stage, there is no way for me to record it short of doing something from my end. Um, so we're not gonna do that for the test. We're gonna wait uh, and just and enjoy the time together. So um, yeah, no replay for the members calls. Can't wait to see your faces or not. No pressure. <laughs> I love that. I love that. So it'll be so much fun. So um, I will also make sure I put out a members post, a members only post, so that those that are not here in the chat can actually see that the uh, members call is happening um, on Saturday, um, just in case they can't make to these live streams so that they will get a notification that there is a members call happening in the Discord this Saturday. So glad that we just put that in the calendar because it's, I'm one of those people that if it's not in my calendar, it's not happening. So I'm glad we just, just put it in. It just went in. It's sorted. It's just sorted. We'll need to work out how to, to, to fit it around because... And we'll also be changing time zones to work out which, which time zone works for other people. Um, oh yeah, sorry. I was, I started crocheting again. That's okay. I'll fix that in a second. Um, and we'll need to, we'll be testing a couple of time zones. So I'll, I'll also be flipping to an evening, um, time zone to see if, um, it suits some of our, our other international friends a bit more. I'm not sure. We'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. Good morning, Amazing Yacht Destinations. You've made it back to Thailand. How was your trip? So good to see you. Bob Curran is here. It's so good to see you, Bob. Thanks for jumping in. Bianca has put the membership call in her calendar. That is awesome. Thank you, Bianca. There we go. We'll drop back to this angle. Um, yeah, so if you want to if you want to try out this Karen Cakes yarn, you can. It is available locally in various stores in, in Australia, but you can also order directly from the Yarnspirations website if you are in Canada or the USA. I have got a an affiliate link in the description for that. If that is something you would like to have a look at. I tell you what though, I went and had a look at the website and guys, Australian guys, like seriously, we are missing out. We're missing out. It's so frustrating. There's so many cool looking yarns and we don't get them here. I'm just like, come on. And so I'm like, please, 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 ship to Australia, please. In the form, please. That's where I put it. I, I may not have written it. I was a bit more, you know, articulate. Um, the trip was awesome. Great to be back. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yes, yeah, Sal, we do. We miss out. And so it'd be great if we could just order directly. That's one of the things I love about Hobie is that we can just order. They ship it from the other side of the world. Sure, it's in US dollars. Sure, you got to pay postage. But at least you can get it if you really want it. Do you know what I mean? Like you've got the option. You don't totally miss out. It's just, it's not not available. It's available at a price. 
And sometimes the price is or is not worth it. Australian dollar and the US dollar aren't always friendly. Um, but goodness me, I'm just like, seriously, I definitely want to, um, I definitely want to get my hands on some of these yarns. They look amazing. Oh, the Hobie orders arrive so quickly considering where they're coming from. Like I've had orders come from places in Australia that don't arrive as fast as a Hobie order from, um, where is it coming from? Is it Netherlands? I want to say Netherlands, but for some reason my brain's like, yeah, that might not be it. Somewhere like that. Holly Alderson, so good to see you. Thanks for jumping in. Um, but yeah, so you know, even if you don't, even if you don't want to order anything, go and have a look at it and just check it out. It is this the range is pretty cool, and it's not just yarns; they've got other stuff too. So definitely worth a look. And they have patents, but they have the USA patents, so they they actually have access to different patents than than we have in Australia. So they've got some things that we can't get here um, from our Australian patent suppliers and vice versa. So um, definitely worth having a squizzy look. And if you've got some friends, you can always save on your shipping. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Um, yeah, Hobie shipping is good. Hobie shipping is good. I've got no idea about yarn separations, guys. I can't put in an order to test it out. Because I'm in Australia and they don't, um, they don't test things. They don't, you know, they don't make it possible. I can't even, it's like, you're in Australia. Um, hello from Victoria, freshly back from Playgroup. And I actually remembered. Awesome. Thank you for jumping in and remembering us. Super chat from Amazing Yacht Destinations. Hang on, I have a button. Boom. There we go. Um, Thank you for all you do for your community and for the awesome advice. Oh, thanks so much. I really appreciate you jumping in. And, like, I know that you're not a crafter, Lewis, um, but I really do appreciate you jumping in and coming over and hanging out with us here. We have such a good time. We just talk about random stuff. I just happen to be crafting while we do it. Well, you know, sometimes just sitting here with my hook in my hand. <laughs> that happens too. Yeah, so we got our super chat. So thank you so much, Lewis. Uh, amazing yacht destinations with 200 Thai baht. So that is great. That is so cool. Um, I've been I've been playing with some things. So you saw that I actually remembered to use my super chat. Um, my super chat. Uh, what do you call it? A graphic. I, I t today I'm currently streaming from eCam, so I can have overlays and graphics. Um, so. Um, which is also why I can have, you know, I can change the colours of the comments around. I'm not 100% happy with how the comments look. I mean, it's definitely the brand colours, like it matches the frame. Um, but I don't know if I want it a bit different. I don't know. I'm going to play with it and I'm going to see because that's what I, what you can do with Ecamm. So I've been playing with some, like, you know, I'm pretty pretty happy with StreamYard for the most part. Um and I, and I love StreamYard, but it doesn't mean I'm not going to keep playing with other softwares and keep on top of them. I actually had a good look at one called Prism Live the other day, and I'd looked at it a few years back and just went, yeah, no. Um, but it, now it's looking really good. So I'm going to have a bit more of a play with that too. So, you know, there might be some streams that come in with some different kinds of looks because I'm playing with things, just playing because that's what I love to do. I like to play with yarn and I like to play with the technology. So bring it on. Bring it on. Let's have a look. We're nearly at the end of another row here, aren't we? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a lot closer than I thought it was. Cool bananas. I need beverage. My raspy voice. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but I can feel it. The tea definitely helps. It definitely helps. I'm definitely a crafter. I'm a crafter, just not with knitting, more woodworking. So I can still appreciate it. Well, I appreciate you appreciating us. That is awesome. Thanks so much. Let's keep going here. So um, one of the other issues that I've been having with my brain not functioning is I haven't been keeping up with all the Facebook groups that I usually keep up with. 
So I don't really know what's the latest gossip going on in the crafting world right now. Usually there's something that's made me grumpy or annoyed or like in disbelief, like some poor person asks for some advice on something and somebody jumps in and goes, I've been doing this for 60 years and I've never done that. And it's just like, that's cool. Thanks. That didn't answer the question. So I haven't seen any of those to trigger me. So I don't know. Is there, is there anything interesting happening? Any any questions happening in the crafting world that you're just curious about that I may have an opinion on? Um, you can even, like if you're a mod, you can send me a link so I can have a quick look at it. Um, definitely curious. Definitely curious. One of the things I, I do want to brush briefly on is just when you're buying... Um, when you're buying your patterns right now, be mindful of where you're buying them from. I'm seeing a lot of people are getting hit by AI-generated patterns. And the, the pattern looks right until you try to follow the instructions. And the instructions don't work and they don't make what the picture is. So make sure you're buying your patterns either from a reputable Etsy seller or somebody that you've bought patterns for from in the past or um, a reputable Ravelry seller. Make sure that people have used the pattern before you um, and, and read and check what, um, what people have said about the pattern, which I recommend you do anyway. But read and double check um, what's happening in the in the um, in the actual like comments at the pattern as well? Always be wary of where you're spending your dollars. Pat J, welcome to the chat. Joanne's in the US is filing for bankruptcy. Wow! So, being in Australia, bankruptcy would mean it's shutting down and it's going away and it's not coming back. Is that what's going to happen with Joanne's as well? Or are they going to try and sell off or, or like, wow. that Because Joanne's is huge. It'd be like someone telling me that, that Spotlight's gone into liquidation. Um, not, that, not that I've heard that. Just to clarify, that's not what I've heard. But to me, Joanne's is equivalent to Spotlight. It's big. It's a big thing. Wow. I know a lot of people that the only local craft store they have is a Joanne's. So, gosh. So, those of you in the US that are here, who here is who shopped at Joanne's and will notice that their loss? That's massive news. Thank you for sharing that, Pat J. Let's get some stitches done while we wait for the chat. I definitely missed a day when our um, when our craft stores were more craft and less homewares. Like if you've been, if you're in Australia and you've been into Spotlight, like if you think about Spotlight 15 years ago, or even even 18 years ago, it was majority craft, lots of fabrics and sewing supplies and yarn and like so much yarn. And now you walk in and you're like, okay, those two aisles right down the back corner, they're yarn. Um, all this section over here is bedding and sheets and towels. And this section over here is all like candles and throws and cushions and all that. Like over half of the store is taken with homewares. Okay. Okay. So it's not that kind of bankruptcy. All right. So... I, I'm not quite sure what that what it means then. So the stores will stay? Is that what that means? I I don't know. I'm 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 very confused. I'll, I'm gonna have to do some research and um find out exactly what's happening. Um so yeah. And and have a look into that because that's very curious. That's very curious. Oh, okay. So it's financially restructuring. All right. So that here would be more like a, what's the word? It's not a, it's 
So, yeah, so here in Australia, that would go into the hands of the receivers and they would financially restructure it, make sure all the bills are paid and everything and maybe give it back to them to run or maybe sell it off. It, it would depend on uh, the outcome of the receivership time. Yeah, Bianca, that's what I'm thinking as well. I'm thinking receivership. So, yeah. But hopefully that means that the stores stay and that something happens and it's all good. Yeah, so Ellen says administration. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking, that sort of thing. See, in Australia, if you go bankrupt, you're done, you're toast. That's it. It's not, it's nothing good can come of that. So, um, yeah, administration, yeah. It might, administration or receivership, one of those things. Uh, let me look here. Christina says, I'm doing a make-along with Barocco from the US, but nowhere in Australia has the yarn, so it cannot be in the running for the prizes. I do them for fun. The shipping is sometimes more than the yarn. Yeah, yeah. I definitely understand that. I definitely, and, and it's frustrating when you'd love to be in the run for the prizes. You'd love to support them and buy the yarn, but good luck finding an Australian store that sells it. There are a couple that have the stock, but they're normally limited by the lines. Like they, don't, they may not have the exact um, yarn that you, like they might have Barocco, but they might not have the exact Barocco yarn you want. And then the chance of them actually having the colour that you want on top of that is just like, it's like winning lottery, really. It's like winning lottery. Like, did you get the actual yarn line you wanted? And did you get it in the colour you wanted? Like, woohoo! It's just one Powerball. So, you know, that, it kind of feels that way, at least here. All righty, got a flip. When Abby walked past the um, studio door before she left to go out, she spotted that her blanket was on the table. And she was like, oh, my God, Mum, are you working on my blanket today? I was just like, yes. Yes, I am. She hasn't seen it for, for like, about two or three months. So she doesn't know that I'm nearly done. So it's just kind of bundled up and folded up in a corner. So she, And she's not allowed to touch it. If she wants me to work on it, she's not allowed to touch it. Um. So, yeah, it's uh, it's very interesting. So her birthday is April 4 or 4th of April, as we say it here. Um, so I'm hoping to have it all done. I did go through and weave in, in the productivity stream, I've woven in all of the ends, or at least I think all of the ends. I may have missed one. Um, so that when I do get to the end... It's just like whatever this ball is and maybe the next ball and ends weaving and it is finished. So um, I'm really happy that I did that. That made me feel very good. So uh, productivity stream is there for replay. If you need just some background noise while you're working away and you just want someone just, you know, piping up every now and again just to ask how you're doing, then the productivity streams might be a really nice uh, replay experience for you um i can't remember who it was but somebody here was talking about how it was but it felt like it was they were getting some body doubling and i didn't really understand what that meant and so they explained it and i'm like oh my gosh yes that is awesome that's your birthday also pat j oh that is awesome that is so good i'm not um a, a marvelous person I mean, she thinks she is. <laughs> no, she is. She's a good girl. She's a good girl. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's, it's. She's nineteen this year, so she's at uni. She's working, and she's you know just becoming an adult. Oh, so do you. <laughs> Um, Dolores is asking, uh, Abby's blanket is looking great. Will you add a border or will you leave it? On this particular one, I'm going to leave it. So I'm just going to bring in the edging. So this is the front side. It's upside down, but this is uh, like, that's how it looks. So oops, I'll just bring it over a little more. So it's pretty, it's pretty tidy, you know. Um, I'll probably just do like a, 
just a row of um, of something just to finish off the edge, um, this edge, just to make it match the bottom edge a bit better. So maybe just a row of like single crochets or something just to give it some, you know, some tightness and just to help it hold its shape. But other than that, I think I'll just, I won't do any side edging. Um, I'm pretty happy with it, truth be told. Let me just check the other side. Am I as happy with the other? I mean, if I had have planned it better, I would have made the match. I would have done an extra stitch so that I could have the two stitches here, which I don't have. Um, I, I didn't consider it. Next time, I would definitely do that. Make sure it ends with the, the thing there so that, so that I can have the double edge like this one, which I love. Um, but I still don't hate it, you know. I don't hate it. And there's nothing I can do about it now. So let, let me just check. Maybe it started with it and then I lost it at some stage. That's probably... Oh, yeah, I did. Oh, no. No, no, no. That, from the start, it's always been just a single on this side. It looks like I tried to add it in. <laughs> I'm like, hey, shouldn't this be a double hedge? And then I lost it again. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm a pro. Um, and then I lost it again. So there's a section of double edging. Um, which looks really cool. <laughs> We're not going to point that out. I bet that I bet she doesn't notice. She's not going to notice. Um, does it? When well, someone says something, that, that, that they're not going to notice. Does that that Instagram, you know, audio? They're they're, they're going to know. They're going to know. So, nobody tell her, okay? Nobody tell her. That'd be great because I'm not pulling it back. I'm not starting again just to have a nice tidy edge. I'm not. But next time I'll make sure I do it properly, okay? I promise. I promise. Let's lay it all back out so it looks nice again. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Um, yeah, just check in the chat. Alrighty. Oh, yeah, it does look neat. Yeah, it does look neat. And I do think, yeah, just a little row at the top just to sort of pull it all in together. Um, I think it will be the way to go. Sarah Spicer, good to see you. Glad you made it in. I'm going to change over to the knitting soon so that I can try and finish off this I-cord bind off on my top. But we'll keep going with this for just a little longer. Where are we at in the ball? The ball is turned into more of a pancake. It's getting a bit flat. So, yeah. Um... I'm really looking forward to Saturday, truth be told, the, the members only live call. Um, it's the first time I've really done that with you guys. So I'm really curious to see how it goes and, um, and just have some fun with it. I, honestly, if you decided to pull it back, we'd be very concerned for you. <laughs> yeah. Because I'd basically have to pull it back and start again. And that's, I love my daughter, but that's not happening. It's just not happening. Um, no. <laughs> no is the answer. That's not happening. So, yeah. It, it's just like, it's cool. It's cool. Whoops. Whatever. It was obvious at one stage I realised it was gone and I should probably try and put it in and then forgot about it. So. I'm like, did I do two the whole way on the other side? <laughs> like, I think I did, or at least for the majority of it. Enough of it that it's not standing out that I didn't. Yeah, it looks like I did two the whole way on the other side, but couldn't manage to do it on the left side. That's funny. Um, 
Sarah says, no hurry. I like it when you waffle. I like to waffle. I waffle a lot. <laughs> I mean, you, you could you could totally have that as the subtext if that's what you want, Dolores. Um, what's the largest frogging you've done? For me, it was a full adult mermaid tail blanket. I didn't like the stitch. I redid it. <sighs> Just trying to think. For me, and probably what made it the largest project is is because it was also hand spun yarn. Um, so for me, it was a hand spun yarn sweater, and the problem was, I made the sweater way too big. Like, I I did the measurements. I I did a gauge swatch. And I went, oh, my gosh, that's not going to fit me. How is that going to fit? That's not going to be right. So then I went two sizes larger. And what I didn't realise is that it already had like six inches of positive ease. So it just became this big, baggy, cumbersome, not even nicely cumbersome. Like, you know, some oversized sweaters look good oversized – this didn't look good that oversized, honestly. So I had to pull all that out. Um, I don't even know what I did with the yarn after that. It's probably still sitting in a crate somewhere, like, while I decide what to do because it was just so much – it was so torturous just pulling all of this entire sweater out. Now I've got all these random-sized balls because when you make a sweater, you know, you just – yeah, it was a big task. It was a big task. I don't think I've pulled out a complete or a semi-completed blanket before. That would be an enormous thing. Um, I just, I, th I think that might be the biggest. I think that might be the biggest. What, what about everybody else in the in the chat? What have you done? Um, I've never fro frogged a, a large project, but I've only been knitting for a few years. Yep, yep. Um, I've unraveled a short row shawl that was already about a meter long. I just didn't think I'd ever wear it. Oh, my gosh. That's a lot of stitches to undo. That's a lot of stitches. Casey, it's good to see you. Did the yarn delivery go as, as planned? Do you have what you need to continue on with your project? I meant to ask the other day and totally forgot. I just, I'm just a terrible person. This week disappeared on me. It's just like I've got all these things in my to-do list and it's just like, oh, wait, I was going to do that Monday. Holy crap, it's Thursday. I still haven't done that. I need to do that. Um, so I've got one task that absolutely must get done today. Um, but, yeah. And then, and then I can relax. <laughs> relax. So I've got an appointment at 2. So between live streaming and that appointment, I want to get this other job done. Um, I'm a serial frogger. If it's not floating my boat, it's toast, no matter how far in I am. Sometimes I'll be like, you know what, I'm just going to give this to someone else. <laughs> and I'll finish it and I will give it away. I'll be like, yeah, cool, I did it. Never doing it again. Here is a gift with love from me to you. Also some hate, but I, you know, I love you. I just hate the project. Um, my biggest frog would be king size cable knit blanket that was around 80% done. Oh, my gosh. Just, as, uh, just so that uh, those in the US, I think king size is the largest size blanket that we can make in Australia. Our, our bed sizing is different to the US, just so you know. Um, the yarn is still sitting in a plastic tub. Oh, my goodness. Um, the extra yarn is perfect. I've popped an update photo on the Discord. I should pop one. Oh, awesome. I'm so glad. Oh, your dress is up to your mid-hip now. <gasps> I'm so excited. I'm so excited. That's so cool. It's so cool. And I'm like, with all the projects that I haven't been working on because of my brain, I'm still queuing projects. Um, so I definitely want to make those cable runners that that um, that Kelly made, 
Um, and they are on the list. And I've got another top I want to make on the list as well. Um, Frogger, okay, so what it is, um, Russell, is we frog our projects because you rip it back. Rip it, rip it, rip it. And it became a thing. And now we just call it frogging. Oh, you're going to frog that project. Um, so it's definitely craft language. It's not so much Australian language. It's craft language. If you talk to um, most knitters or crocheters, they know what frogging is. So, but outside of that, not sure if anyone else knows what it is. But it's because we rip it. Um, oh, no, Leanne. Oh, cool. Yeah, I hope you go all right. Yeah, it's a good one, Russell, isn't it? I thought you'd like that one. Um, Kelly says, I often frog jumpers once I get to the body and discover that it's too big. Oh, see, for me, I have to make the bigger sizes at least sort of to here for my arms. But then I sort of, I'm just like, I'm just adapting their pattern and like bring it in for my body because my arms are out of proportion for the rest of my torso. A tinking is another favourite. Yes, if you are a knitter, you might be familiar with the term tink where, where you unknit each stitch. So you're going back and unknitting, like if you've got to go back and fix something. So tink is knit spelt backwards because you're undoing the knit stitches. You're going backwards, tinking. So that's another fun one. So tinking and frogging. I've actually got a whole YouTube video on tinking and frogging here on the channel if you want to go and check it out. Um, Alison says, I frogged a large hand spun shawl because the top part where I started it wouldn't sit flat even after blocking. It was like a little mound and, and it really bugged me. Was it one of those like little garter tabs that you – like you know those, those like nine-stitch garter tabs that they get you to start projects with? Sometimes they just won't sit. Like for me, it's, it's usually if it's a thicker yarn, like if it's a really fine lace, I can just block that to death. Um, but, yeah, if it's, a, if it's a thicker yarn, I really struggle with those garter tabs. Um, I'm not a frogger. Years ago, I started the Havana blanket and just tossed it. <gasps> oh, my gosh. Really? You just in the bin or to, to like a charity or something? Like I would have found some of like, dude, I'm over this. I'm out. And either donated it to a charity or given it to a friend to work on or something. Oh, my gosh. That's hardcore. In saying that, there have been things that I've just gone, nope, I'm never looking. I hated the yarn. I hated everything about it. I'm not spending any more time with this bin. I've done that. Not usually a big project, though, but I've done it. Like, normally one skein projects, that'll happen to. Like, I am over you. You are out. You are the weakest link. Goodbye. Gosh. Um, oh, it was a garter tab. Oh, there you go. Um, I've heard advice to use smaller size needle for the garter tab. Haven't tried it myself, but makes sense. See, I use a bigger size needle so that there's more space in the stitches so it's easier to stretch it and make it flat. But I think it, it probably depends on what you're making and the weight of the yarn and so many things. Um, Sarah says, I am learning cables on my antler toque by Tinker Knits and finding out tinking cables is trickier than plain knitting. Yes, it is because you've kind of got to tink them and uncross them and yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah, we're all like, we're all like massive respect for Holly because she's just hardcore in the bin. You are toast, burnt toast. So yeah, wow, cool. Hardcore, as Kelly says, hardcore. Francis has made it. Hello, Francis. It's good to see you. Welcome, welcome. Uh, 
because uh, Francis has made it and Francis is a channel member, I do just want to remind everybody that this Saturday at 10 a.m. Brisbane time is our first channel member video call meetup over on the Discord. So if you are a channel member, meaning you've got a little ninja next to your name, so some of you may not know your channel members because both Kelly and Leanne donated some channel memberships today. So a pile of new channel members that may not know their channel members. Um, if you've got the little ninja next to your name and you're green in the live chat, you are a channel member and you will be able to join the Discord membership area and jump in on our member chat, which is like a little Zoom. So you can have your camera on and talk to me and talk to each other and just have some fun. So uh, we're going to do that this Saturday, 9 o'clock my time. So uh, Sorry, 10 o'clock my time, 9 o'clock Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time. Um, <laughs> I'm seriously wanting to frog the Queen, then Josephine can't throw me under the bus about it. It is a whip. Yeah, it's, oh. But, like, every row is being cut, so you're just going to have these long, are you just going to bin all the yarn? Like, what are you going to do with it? Like that's what why don't you just finish it? Finish the queen. Finish the queen. Um, the sack of shame. <laughs> okay, thanks for that. I have to bring that comment back. The sack of shame, which I call a whip sack, but once it goes in there, it never comes back out again. Oh, my gosh, the sack of shame. Who else has a sack of shame? Just out of curiosity, I have a crate. I, I mean, I have a crate that does the same thing, but I love the name sack of shame. I think, I think a sack of shame is better. It just sounds so much more dingy in a corner, you know, like just as that sack over there full of... Crap, I don't want. Oh, you broke me. I'm broken now. Come on, voice. We've got this. We can do this. Um, <laughs> Kelly has a naughty corner. Yeah, I have a, I have a crate of, um, I just call it the crate of unfinished objects. I mean, but sack of shame just has a certain ring to it, right? What's that word? Je ne sais quoi. Just this feeling of that it emotes just by saying sack of shame. <laughs> French is not a language I've learnt properly, just as an FYI. Um, we need large bags printed ASAP, sack of shame. They'd sell out. Yeah, I, I agree. We need totes with sack of shame on them. I will I will be designing something up and I will let you know. I'm stealing your idea and I'm running with it. It is going to be a tote on the red bubble store. <laughs> I will sit down in the next couple of days and and nut out some nut out some ideas. I'll put it over on I'll make a community chat where we can vote on which one will end up being in the store and uh, and we'll go from there. Goodness me. Isn't it funny? Some of the best things come out of just conversation. Bob Curran uses a pillowcase for her sack. Well, that would work as well. But see, I've got this imagery of like, like a, you know, like a sack just standing, like leaning and it's just like the outline drawer of a sack, which is sack of shame. There 
There we go. We're just going to end off on this one for now. I'm going to jump over to the next project. So this is where we're at. Whoops. Just making a do a pile of stuff. There we go. We want that one. All right. It's coming along. It feels amazing, I have to say. Just squeezy. It feels so good. All right. Let us grab this project bag and go over there, flank it. All right. So this is the Rocket T that I've been working on. After last week's stream, I went and found, I had to try it on again. So I had to put it onto a, a, a cable, like onto a, a knitting keeper thing. What are they called? Don't know. These, these, they're good. Whatever. Um, and then when I when I decided to put it back on the needles, I actually went and found a much longer one, and it is so much easier. There we go. So it's rolling up. Will that like when I block that? Is it going to roll up all the time? Because I hate that. That annoys me. So it's an I cord bind off, and I've kept it loose so it's not tight. Um. And I like it, you know, as it as it is, but it rolls. Like, do I call it always roll? I thought that was the point of having one. They don't roll. Will a wash fix that? Because like I'm this close to pulling it back and just doing a like a, a um like a a moss stitch edge or something. So let me know in the chat. Because I don't like it when it rolls. But I've done across the front. I've done across the run. Here we go. Here we go. That's where it's at. Tuck that in there. So we still got to add the sleeves on. I still got to do the neckband. But we're down to this. Uh, Casey says that she's done two and it blocked out. Okay. What were yours made out of? This is this one's cotton, so or majority cotton. It's like eighty-seven percent cotton. Um. Oh, Sal, like seriously, honey, go and rest yourself and look after yourself. Thank you so much for persevering, but please look after yourself first. Um, it could still roll up. I caught on her own rolls. Oh. It was a super wash. All right. <coughs> All right, everybody. I need your opinions. Do I keep going with the I cord or do I tink it back while I still can and just do a garter, like not garter, I do a moss stitch like a four row moss stitch edge just to end it off or even three rows, probably three. I don't want to do three rows, but I will if I have to. What edge do the sleeves get? Oh, that's an excellent question. I don't know. I oh, know if it rolls, I'll, I won't wear it. It's that simple. If it rolls up, I will not wear it. I do not wear things that roll like that. They bug me. It looks to me, it looks like it doesn't fit. And I've already got enough body image issues. I don't need people thinking. I don't need my brain thinking people are thinking because they don't think it. They don't care. I don't need my brain thinking that people are thinking that my clothes don't fit. All right, let me just find the pattern. Where did I put it? It's in Notability. It's in notability. Maybe it's not in notability. I thought I'd put it into notability. Webinar pack planets. That's my ranunculus notes. That's the knee high sock notes. Oh, that's just the notes on the pattern. Maybe I just put it straight into his knit companion. 
Oh, yeah, there it is. There it is. It's a knit companion. Okay, so for the sleeves. Looks like the sleeves get an I-cord edge as well. I'm just double checking. Yep, so the sleeves and the neckband get I-cord too. Oh, thank you, Bianca. It's I-cord everywhere. Yeah. So that's the problem. That is the problem. If I change this, then that'll be wrong and this will be wrong. <sighs> oh. If it, keep going, if it still rolls, you can add a round of applied I-cord to it. Elizabeth Zimmerman recommends two rounds of I-cord as a border. Oh, because that would be weighty enough to keep it pulled down. Which one of her books has her, because I've got, I've got, I love Elizabeth Zimmerman. I love her books. I've got her little green book on knitting sweaters. Um, but which, where would I find instructions for that? Because I would love that. That would that would make the difference, I think. If I could just know. And like I don't mind having applied I cord there and then just like like two rows of I cord there and then just a single row and everything else. I could deal with that. And like I do know that when I heat with my heat of my hands rolls it back down again. So, you know. All right. I, I'm gonna keep going. I will keep going. Has anyone completed the project with a different edge? Not as far as I've seen. Because the eye could looks really good. Like it really does. I'll put some ribbing on the bottom. I, I don't like ribbed bottom tops. So I don't wear them. Anything that has a rib bottom on a top, I change it to a, a garter, uh, to a, a moss. I don't like, I, I don't like uh, the shape of body that I've got. I need things to skim out, not pull in. There we go, get it on there. All right. I'm confident that I can continue eye cording on camera because I've never done that before. Oh, you have all of her books? Hang on, I'll see if I can find Oh, thank you. That would be amazing. And um, just let me know which one it is. I've got no qualms about buying resource books if I can get my hands on it. Knitters in the room, if you don't have Elizabeth Zimmerman books, go and rent, borrow one from the library, whatever. Go and have a read. They're amazing. Um, the crazy sock lady has a video on putting an eye cord on a blanket edge. It would probably be the same or similar to add the extra one to your top. Yeah, possibly, possibly. Um, what am I doing? I'm up to dropping it back. But it does take, it does take some time to get around the sweater doing an eye cord bind off. And this is a four stitch eye cord as well. It's not a three stitch. Um, I had to like recheck the instructions like 14 times because every single thing I've read about eye cord, whoop, come back here you, everything I've seen or done with eye cord has always been three stitch. So this was a bit different. I mean, it, it just sits a little flatter and I'm okay with that. I've got no qualms. No qualms whatsoever. I actually thought it might stop it from rolling, but it did not. It did not stop it from rolling. But I know what it's called now. So even if you can't find it in the book, I can Google it. Because my Google foo is strong. That is a superpower also. Concentration, focus, Google foo. All right, 
I need a beverage. Because I love the look of the eye cord. I really do. And I love the eye cord's leave ends on the ranunculus. I think they look amazing. Google ability, Google ability, I can't say it. <laughs> Google ability. So I just like, I'm just, you know, good at Google foo. Alrighty. I definitely have to concentrate a bit harder on this. I've just realized I'm like less chatty. More concentrate -y. That's all right. If you guys are okay with it, I'm okay with it. So let me know in the chat if you're okay with me concentrating just a little bit harder on this or if I need to change back to the blanket. I'm happy to do that if that's what you would prefer. One, two, three. And then off we go. And then, so how are you all going working on your projects? Let me know in the chat. Focus, <coughs> focus away, says Holly. Thank you, Holly. Oops. This might be a task for productivity streams rather than for um, Thursdays. I might remember that when I'm up to like the neck band and stuff to um, save them for a Saturday. Truth be told, I would prefer to actually be finished by the next time we're due for a, a um, productivity stream. But, you know, I've still got sleeves to knit yet. This needs to be a Zoom because I can't crochet and type. Well, John, we are going to be having a, our first ever memberships only uh, video chat call on, on Saturday. So Friday night, your time, Saturday, our time. You're more than welcome to jump in. I see you're a channel member. So it is for channel members like yourself. I will get there. Um, yeah. So I'm just having a think. So... This afternoon, I am off to have a very ouchy massage and Cairo to try and get my body to stop hating me. It's, it's not going to work. My body hates me. Um, it might just hate me less for a little bit, but quite often I'm pretty um, pretty sore for a day or two after it. So um, that's why I'm like, oh, I may not make it to Caffeinated Crafters. We have to wait and see how it goes because I'm quite often very tired after those things. I quite often need a nap, truth be told. Um, that's even before I started getting sick and the, needed a nap at the drop of a hat. So um, some people find massages invigorating. I find some massages relaxing and invigorating. These remedial deep tissue massages are less so... Like I feel good in the knowledge that I'm doing something to try and help my poor body um, and I'll feel great in a day or two. I'll feel amazing, but not so much while they're poking the sore bits, you know. Um, let me go here. Uh, I took my beginner knitting to show my friends at Spinners Group and got the thumbs up from everyone. That is awesome. Glad to hear it. So happy to hear that. Um, so frustrated for the third time I've started on a cowl pattern in the round to find it's twisted on the needle. I don't know why it keeps happening. Okay, so I've got, I've got a tip. I've got a tip for you. Let me just slide these back. Let me just slide these back. My tip is actually 
don't, don't, don't join it on the cast on round. Knit your first round first. And then once you finish that first round, just double check all the stitches are laying properly. You've got a little bit more space and you can see everything's hanging better. Then join it for the second round. And when you're weaving in your stitches at the end, your tail just needs to weave through the first stitch to join it back up a little bit. And then you don't have to worry about like, when I started doing that, the whole stress of knitting in the round went away. It just, it, it left, it's gone. And it was just because I kept, like when you cast on, sometimes they do roll around and stuff and you can go around and try and straighten them up as much as you want. But for me, it always, it always stuffed it up. And, and I ended up with a twist in there again and, and I was in the same boat. I'm like, I'm not doing in the round anymore. And a friend of mine told me, knit the first round just as a knit and then join the second round. So give that a try. See if that works for you because it was, it was doing my head in. It was doing my head in. Um, it's in knitting around page 139. Let me just write that down. Elizabeth Zimmerman. What colour cover is on that one? Page 139. All right. Under multiple I-cord border. All right. Thank you for that one. Okay. Um, let's have a look here. I've just been to the massage and chiropractor this morning. I feel amazing for the first time in a week. Oh, that's so awesome. I'm so happy that you feel that way. Discord link for those of you that, especially those of you that are channel members. Even if you're not a channel member, come and join the Discord. We have lots of chatting, lots of spaces for you. But channel members, there's a special area. And we are having a channel members only call. So we will see how that goes on Saturday. I'm getting ready to tie on the ninth skein for my corner to corner join as you go. I will go and check that in the Discord. That is awesome. Okay, it's the blue cover one. All right, I think I've got the green cover one, but I'll have a look. I may have to do a purchase. And because it's Elizabeth Zimmerman, it is an absolute bomb of a resource. You should have Elizabeth Zimmerman books. Um, a jumper is fixed. Woot woot, it's perfect and invisible. No. <laughs> If you see me wearing the jumper, don't look too close. Okay. I'm not going to be checking out people's stitches. Like, oh, my God, did you see how she twisted that stitch? Oh, worst knitter in the world. No, that's not me. That's not me. I need a more drink again. Making that silly voice raspy me. It got me. Okay, let's keep going with this I-cord binder. I feel much better that I have an option for a fix if I'm not happy later. I feel very happy about that. And I also like that if I'm not happy with, because right now the V on the V-neck's a little deep for me. <laughs> um and I'm hoping the eye cord will be just enough just to sort of pull it together and bring it up just a little. But if it's not, I can always add in the second eye cord there. Um, so an eye cord is a, um, it's a knitted in the round kind of tube, right? So see how this is, I'm going from straight stitches, right? Just straight, the knitting, the edge of the, the sweater and it, and and knitting on this this rounded tube here and so this is called an like it this this i cord is knitted on but you can actually just knit the i cords i recommend um double pointed if you're just going to knit an i cord and you just knit three or four stitches and when you get to the you just push it to the other end and keep knitting and the the, the yarn pulls it and turns it into a tube. Like think of like when you're using like one of those little French knitters and it creates a tube of knitting. 
It's that. Um, except you do it with your needles rather than with a little French knitter. Um, and we, here we just, what we're doing is, this is a four, four stitch I cord. So you knit three stitches, one, two, and three. And then the fourth stitch, you go through the back loops of the fourth and fifth stitch, which it connects it onto the next piece. And then you slide it back to the other side. So that's the advantage is if you've got double pointers, you can just slip it from one end to the other. You don't have to slide the individual stitches. Um, and then just keep doing it. And it creates like you've got to pull that first stitch a little bit just to make sure that the, the yarn at the back pulls across all the other stitches. And you just create this little tube of knitting that creates a really neat edge. I've, I've used I-cord on shawls. Um, I've just never done it on a garment before. The French knitting, AKA a knitting Nancy or a knitting B, or there's so many different names for those little, basically the, the, the cotton spool with the four nails in it that you sort of wrap, the, you teach kids how to do it. But I've also got like a little tiny four stitch knitting machine that's in a circle and you just crank the handle and they just drags it through. But it just creates a really nice edge. I just really would like the edge to not roll. That's my only issue. Yeah, I, I think the I does stand for idiot. I don't like that it stands for idiot, but I think it does stand for idiot. Um, but once you get into the swing of it, I mean, I'm keeping an eye on it just because I want to make sure I've got the right tension across the back. And I am knitting in the backs of loops and stuff. So I, I want to make sure I'm keeping it similar all the way across the sweater because I also don't want the sweater to, to cinch in. I want it to just sit because when I've been trying it on, it sits lovely with just like this. Um, and, ev and even just, it just skims very nicely and it's a little loose and it's great. So I don't want the eye cord put, cinching it in too much. I mean, if it does a little, it's okay, but I don't want it to do a lot, of, a lot. Oh, have you, yeah, I have seen those little eye cord doohickeys. I, re I have, yeah. Um, I think that's an interesting idea. I, I have a knitting machine tool that has those three and I'm wondering why they're not just using an existing tool. Do they need it on that angle for some reason? I don't know. Maybe they do. Maybe to get it to, to draw in so they can loop it better. Maybe that's the advantage. But on the knitting machine one, the, the needles are, are, are like are perfectly straight. Like it's, it's over there. I can't get it because it's under stuff. But it's, the, the, it's like a wide, fat piece of plastic with three prongs of knitting uh, machine knitting needles in the top and then comes down to a narrower handle. But everything is straight and perpendicular. Whereas the, the doohickeys that you're talking about, they've kind of got them coming in on, well, maybe not quite to that, but they're, they're on an angle and they all angle in. It's more like a crochet hook size handle. But I like the look of them. I think, I think anything that makes your work faster and easier is awesome as long as it's faster and easier. So, you know... I can see a lot more things coming out with I-cord bind-offs because of it. It would definitely be making this task a lot faster. Although this is a four cord, so the three would not do the job. So that's the other thing. You're limited to a three cord, three strand I-cord, three stitch I-cord. I'll get the words right. Like, no judgment. The words will eventually be correct. There we go. Um, I don't know how you get the tension to be exactly what you want it. Like, yeah, that's the trick, isn't it? 
quite often with knitting machines, it depends on how much weight you pull onto the stitches as to the tension that you get. So if you kept the tension loose, the stitches are looser, but you don't want it too loose because they just pop off. Um, but if you made it really heavy, or is it the other way around? It's been a long time since I've machine knit, honestly. Did I? No, that's correct. I'm like, did I just knit <coughs> the last one and not knit it through the back loops? Like, I mean, there's a possibility it could happen. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Um, no, it looks right. It looks right. And that's all that matters. It looks fine. And it happened to be right where the yarn changed from the more cotton to the metallic. So all the way along, that just looks a little bit different. Just let me just unroll this for you. See how it does sometimes look like it's a little different going in and out? And it's just because the thickness, this the metallic is just a little thicker than the non-metallic. So it does sort of go in and back out again, then in and out. So that's allowed. Um, so, yeah. You must be feeling better, by the way. Did the Yetis make it to the show? We have a Yeti. We do have one. Um, I, have, um, I have sparkling water, still water, and then I have special tea. I have my uh, licorice root tea from my very sore thumb. Um throat <laughs> don't even know what i'm saying what am i doing here where am i even up to i'm doing this this is what i'm doing i'm doing the the pass back i was up to the pass back and then i got confused because words were hard and then i said thumb instead of throat i don't even know why um and then Leanne's reminding everybody to hit the thumbs up that's probably what it was i probably read that that's what i'm going with that's where i'm at um, I cords, be careful that I cords have on me, Sue. Oh, gosh. Don't even joke about that. I cords have been out there. Still water. We call that moonshine. Very funny. I mean, like the non sparkling water. It's like tap water. I'm drinking tap water. Is that better? Still water. Goodness me. I laugh because of, you know, you're right. Um, yeah, we were just talking about that one. We were. Um, uh, Nispin Girls just asked about it. Yeah, it looks, it looks interesting. It looks interesting. Uh, I'm not sure how I... I'm not sure how I... Um, if I would use one or not, just especially not for this one, because this is a four stitch one, I'd, I'd have to make one that could do four. I mean, I've got a pile of machine needles. I could make one with some, what's that? What's that stuff called? Fimo? No, what is it? The oven baked stuff. I can't remember. Um, AKA water. Okay. Still water. I now call it. Yeah, see, now we're going to be thinking still water every time. It's like, what kind of still water have you got? <laughs> uh, Sculpey polymer clay. Oh, there you go. We've got polymer clay here too. Abby uses it. So, I mean, I've probably got all the stuff I need to make one. So is Sculpey the air dry or the bake dry? And yeah, I probably would not do come, like even if I made one, I probably wouldn't jump in with this project. I would want to do something else and test it out and check out the tension.
Oh, it's bake. Yep, you bake sculpey. All right. Yeah. They probably have both. I'm not sure which one Abby's got. She might have the air dry. I don't remember her baking, but that doesn't mean she didn't, and I just didn't notice it. I'm such a good parent. <laughs> I can't even know why my kid turns on the oven, like, you know. When she was a toddler, I was on high alert all the time. But now that she's older, and she should know how to not burn herself by utilising the oven, being 19 years old. Um, I made a keychain with my dad's ashes from the Sculpey. Oh, so he's always with you. I like that. I purchased a silicon pen mould and poured resin crochet handles. They were fun. Ah, oh, that sounds fun also. Look at all these things. Such clever ideas. I love it. I don't know how I feel about a resin crochet handle. I, I prefer a softer handle, but it could also look beautiful. Sometimes pretty is enough. Nearly just knit it instead of doing the thing. Makes me wonder how many other times I've done that. It's coming up to lunchtime and I am hungry. I don't know what I'm going to have today. Oh, wait, I do know. I've got leftover cashew chicken, unless Tim ate it. I really want that. I really want that. Um, oh, I'm diving into a new craft this week, the art of messaging. Nice. Nice. I agree with you. Pretty and functional is better. Agreed. Uh, these are display ones. They kind of have furled shape groups. Yeah. No, that's a no from me. I don't like, I don't like those ones. They don't work for me. I love that. The art of messaging. I've been reading a really good book, um, Mari Smith book, on that sort of stuff. So, because it's it's something I'm not great at either. So I want to get better at it. So I like to read a book. It's it's kind of funny. I can write emails for other people, but I can't. I'm not confident in writing them for myself. We're getting closer to the edge here. Let me have a little look. My Taka <laughs> Bell are out of control. Knitting, knitting videos somehow come. Oh, okay. Interesting. Oh, thank you, Leanne. I thought that was JC. And I'm thinking that's oddly, um, that's unusual for JC to, oh, Jance. Sorry, Jance. Retreat forms. Yes, they are on the list. They were supposed to go out this week and they didn't because the week disappeared. Um, so they will be out hopefully tomorrow afternoon. I've got a day at the desk tomorrow. So I've caught up with all my orders and other things. So they are fast approaching the top of the list. Um, what is a furl shape? Okay, hang on. I've got one. Fell, fell have got a couple of different shaped hooks. So my usual crochet hook shape is like this, right? Because I crochet like that. So it's got, it's nice and balanced weight wise. It's not too heavy. It doesn't unbalance things. Furls do these big bulbous hooks. So when you crochet like this, 
everything's off balance. Everything doesn't work. But if you're an overhand crocheter, it sits very nicely in your hand and they can do that. Now, this is just a plain one. They also have some that are like more wood turned, like they use – this is this is one of their acrylic ones, but they're wood ones, which I do have a wood one somewhere. I'm not sure where it is. Um, they – they I've got the more intricate wood turning and the furls um, – they're, they're just very heavy to hold as a, as a pen holder. So if you're a knife holder, so if you crochet like you hold a knife, then they actually they work a lot better. But if you hold um, it like a pen, it doesn't it doesn't work as well. Oh, uh, gents, I'm so sorry. No, it was it was my bad. Somebody um, a bit of a troll came in, and I didn't quite realise because I did use knitting in the and it took me a second. The mods dealt with it, but for some reason I thought it was you. Wasn't you? Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, um, but yeah. So that's this is a furl sort of shape. They tend to do these sort of like they've got a nice the the, the actual shaft itself is pretty is a pretty good length, but because like compared to this one, um, it does start tapering, so it does change size here. Um, and they're a good size if you've got bigger hands, but it is not so good for different, like depending on the style of crochet that you like. And for some people, some people swear by these. Some people absolutely love them and don't use anything else. Um, for me, I've been gifted some, which is like this is beautiful in a case and everything's beautiful gift. And I got a, a timber one as well that I was gifted. Um, Unfortunately, with the, my style of crochet, they don't really work for me. But they're very pretty. Um, let me a look here. Are oh, you trying to undo mohair? Uh, in the freezer, dude. Stick your mohair in the freezer for 10 minutes and then undo it. I don't know why it works. It just does. Um, I have an old fish, I have old fashioned fishing bobbers that look like that. Yeah, possibly. Possibly. Um... I don't think the way you hold the hook makes a difference. I've seen people I've seen people use it both ways. Yeah, but see, because of how I hold it, the balance is off. All of the weight is pulling and squashing my hand. And it just it, it slows me down. It slows my crochet down so much. So I just don't use them. I like a balanced hook. That's something I really do like about the um the the crochet dots, the crochet me dots hooks from Knit Picks. Um, while they're big and they're long, they are still super lightweight. So I can still move fairly quickly with them. Um, blanket update in the Discord. Dad keychain in the fun zone under the chat post. Thank you. I'll go and check out both after the stream is over. Yeah, unfortunately, with a lot of the um, um, the third-party live streaming softwares, when the mods delete out something from the chat, it still makes it into the live stream conversation I see. So it, it's even though you modded, probably modded it out before I started reading it, I, it took me a second. I'm very sorry about that, mods. Mm, 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 mm. Um, I think people who have larger hands tend to like the furls more. Yeah, I think like I think our, our largest hand crocheter in this group is John, and he prefers to use Tunisian hooks, uh, even when he's not doing Tunisian. Um, does any of the brains trust know? Here we go, everybody. Of a straight needle that are sharp and short, like the signature set, um, in the seven inch length. Um, I don't know. For straights. 
I don't use straights a lot, I'll be really honest. So I'm probably not the best person to ask. But if anybody in the chat can help Jance out, that would be awesome. Um, someone called me cheeky today. Is that used in Australia and is that a good or bad thing? We, we do say cheeky in Australia. Um, <coughs> cheeky is when you might say something. Um, a cheeky is, I'm just trying to think of when I would call someone cheeky. Like, um, I'd be like, you're cheeky. Um, where you have said something that could be a bit naughty, but is not bad. Like just a little, you know, like I think you're a little cheeky when you're um, saying data and water, like when you put those in and you spell them out, like when you're sort of like having a little dig at how we say them as Australians, I think that's a little bit cheeky. Um, like it's not a bad thing. It's just like, I'm on you. I see it. That's it's just a little bit of a cheeky thing that you're doing. So um, I don't know what that would be. Yeah, a bit funny and a bit naughty at the same time. Yeah, that's a little bit cheeky. Is there a negative? Um, is there a negative version of cheeky? I'm just double. I'm just thinking. I mean, I remember my mum telling me stop being cheeky. Um, where you know, sometimes maybe a little bit inappropriate. I don't know. Like, I can't remember the exact context, but if, you know, if I was sassing my mum, she'd be like, stop being cheeky. So I think it depends on the tone that they say cheeky depends on the connotation. Um, so, yeah. But usually it's like a, a, a naughty but funny thing. Oops, come back stitch, try again. There we go. This yarn, it does get a look, like if I'm not watching, I can split it very easily because it's a, um, it's like a mesh. It's like a tube, it's been knitted. Oh, you'll see it in another, reg okay, I'll go and check that. And I'll let you know, I'll let you know which connotation they were aiming at. Look at this, there's only this much more to go and the bind off is done. So happy. I won't get it all finished in the stream today though. It does take longer than anticipated to, to get it all done. I realized the other day when I sat down, I'm like, oh my gosh, it just took me hours to do half, like hours and hours. Admittedly, it's my brain was not as good as it is today. So... I'm going to end off there for today, but we we're only halfway done. We were about here, right? We we're about halfway done. And now we've done nearly half again. So I've got that much more to do. So maybe an extra thing of I cord will that one's not rolling. What the heck? I don't understand it. I don't understand it. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for those of you that have joined and hung out all day. Don't forget, we've got Caffeinated Crafters tonight. And we've also got um, the members only, the very first of our members only um, live calls happening over on the Discord. So if you have not yet joined the Discord and you are a channel member, Run, don't walk, to go and sort that out. Um, if you need some help, let us know. Um, there's a few of us around who can help you get into it. And um, and we will look, we'll check it out. Um, I love the eye called cast off, but it takes forever. But it looks so good. I agree. I agree. Oh, Bob's asking if anyone else is doing the Helen Stewart MCAL shawl. Um, I don't know. I'm not, but others could be. But I'm going to head off. I'm going to go and have some lunch and then get ready for the next part of my day. You guys have an awesome 
rest of your day or evening and I'll catch you all here next Thursday. Bye now. If I can remember how to end the stream, there it is. There's a button. <laughs> Bye.